The following is a presentation of TFNN. This story began on a nice Florida winter day, December 10th, 2005, when a lone fisherman in Mosquito Lagoon out near Cape Canaveral discovered a crab trap that appeared to have something caught inside of it. As the fisherman looked closer, he noticed that a baby dolphin was tangled in a rope that had cut off the supply of blood to the dolphin's tail. The fisherman cut the rope and called for help because he saw this dolphin was struggling. The dolphin, later named Winter, was brought to the Clearwater Marine Aquarium, but too much damage was done to her tail and it could not be saved. Now folks, the greatest gift you can give anyone is the gift of your attention. And that is exactly what Winter received from a group of prosthetic engineers who created an innovative new design for a prosthetic tail. Winter, she's doing just fine, and her story of survival and success has gone on to touch others, many, many others. These are folks that need a more flexible prosthetic. We can't control the circumstances of life, folks, only how we respond to them. Circumstances are like the wind. Learn to set a good sail, folks, and let the wind take you to your dreams, your treasures, and your destination. Welcome to TFNN. We're glad you're here and you have our attention. It is now time for The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, Money Masters and Treasure Hunters. Welcome to the September 21st, fantastic Friday edition of today's opening call on the Trader's Edge. I'm your host, Steve Rhodes, and let's get started. Folks, I absolutely treasure your presence here today, and my outcome is to help you to become a better Money Master and provide you with the tools that help each of us to lead an inspired life, because leading an inspired life, folks, that is what it's all about. So let's go take a look at one of our tools. This is the tool that I call, when you rule your mind, you rule your world. How's that sound, folks? Now, the greatest teachers down through the ages have described the importance of our mind and of being a master over our thoughts. Buddha, he said the following. He said, the mind is everything. What you think, you become. You know, the greatest discovery that one can make is to know that any human being can alter his or her life by just simply changing the attitudes of the mind. Believe it or not, the most difficult thing, and this goes to most of you out there, the most difficult thing, folks, for a powerful mind is to understand that it really can be its own master. So the best place to start is with a positive attitude. Why? Because positive attitude, folks, because when you think positive, what you're saying to yourself is that you can absolutely accomplish anything. You know, I don't know if you've ever, you know, I, I love attending the workshops, the seminars. I hope that you do as well because they just simply help to open up your eyes, your mind to so many things. I used to attend, excuse me, Zig Ziglar events. And he had a saying that went like this. I might not get it exactly right, but it was pretty much went like this. He said, your business is never really good or bad out there. It's either good or bad right between your two ears. You should probably write that one down, folks, because, you know, it is the truth. It's what's going on inside our world and your business. The world is never as really bad or as good out there. It's just really what's between your two ears because, folks, our thoughts – and most, our, our thoughts are most assuredly things out there. Our thoughts are conceived in our mind, and they travel through time and space like ripples, you know, in a pond. And as we all know, if you've ever thrown a, uh, if you've ever thrown a, a stone into a, uh, just a still piece of water, you see those ripples, and what you know is they absolutely go out, and they affect and they touch everything. Our thoughts, folks, are our building blocks. The world that we see is the one that we've created with our thoughts, and our mind, folks, that is there to be able to build fantastic things. It is Fantastic Friday. I say rule your mind and rule your world. Stay positive and go build an incredible life folks. Let's go take a look at these markets here. We've got the futures are up. That means the bulls have checked in to work early. Yesterday, you had the bears checking in because when we came online, you had the futures down. This morning, you've got futures up. It was green last night in Asia. All across the board, you had the uh, Shanghai up two points, but it was still green. You had the Hang Seng up 144 points, up about seven tenths of a percent. The Nikkei closing up a quarter of a percent, up 23 bucks and change. It is green in Europe, with the exception of the FTSE. Somebody uh, called over there. Apparently, they didn't get their invitation. Of course, it's only down three points now. It'll be up uh, green by the time 
the uh, market opens here in uh, about uh, 20 minutes. Uh, over in Germany, that's what we're going to actually go look at first. Normally, if you're watching us on Tiger TV, what you're seeing on my screen here is the uh, ES Mini. That's normally where we start. But I think this morning what we'll do is we'll go start over in uh, Germany. It is September. I think they think it is Oktoberfest. Maybe they just showed up to work early. So let's go take a look at that DAX chart. You've got the DAX here trading out at 74.64. That's up 75%. That's up 1%. But what's important here when you take a look at the DAX, remember this had been a weak link out there. And what you can see, the DAX right now up over the highs of September the 14th. What's important about that, folks? Well, you got a one-world market out here. you got the correlation of what's going on. Our highs and our markets are absolutely going to be attacked here today and attacked this morning. I don't have the volume here in the DAX. doesn't matter. You know, the DAX, after making a one-to-one, A to one, a to B equals CD up, which it completed, if you're watching us on Tiger TV, your A point down here is going to be the lows of June 5th. Now, in our marketplace, it was June 4th at our lows. In the case of the DAX, the low was 59.14, and a little change, that was your A point. Your B point was up here on July 19th out at the... Uh uh, 6698 level. And then what you did, uh, your C point, I'm sorry, your C point out here is as it pulled back into July 26 at 63, uh, 6324. So you got your A to B equals CD. It's made a 1 to 1.272. It's on its way to make a 1 to 1.618. What it's really doing here, if we go ahead and shorten up this, uh, what you're going to see here, and actually let me just pull this back a bit. Let's take a look at the, uh, rising price channel that the DAX has been traveling in ever since going all the way back into September 2011. It's now September 2012. In fact, it was September 12, 2011, when the DAX really put in its low out here. You can see the 1 to 1.272 A to B equals CD. What the DAX wants to do, and it's certainly taking out its highs here from September the 14th, of course, doesn't close for another 2 hours and 15 minutes, but if it closes, takes out its highs. Rest assured, our markets here in the U.S. are going to do the same thing. The DAX, what it wants to do is it wants to travel all the way up to the upper portion of this trend line out here. Price point, uh, let me see here if I can go ahead and just adjust it. A 1 to 1.618. The next stop for the DAX in Germany is out at 77.20 out there. So that's in uh, Germany. Let's go back to our markets here. Let's go take a look at the ES Mini. This is a 30-minute chart. Yesterday, what we were showing here, we were showing the A to B equals CD down that it was making. You're seeing a uh, target retracement area that we showed that the uh, uh, ES Mini was going to travel to. We were waiting for the bulls and the bears who are nothing but sign builders out there. We were waiting for them to go ahead and build a sign for us. We knew what the range was, and the range, folks, was nothing more than coming off of the Uncle Ben Bernanke statement out at about 1 o'clock on September 13th, the low out there in the ES mini 1428 the high that was put in was at 1468 it was done at 10 30 in the morning on september 14th if you just take your retracement ruler and go from the low to the high what you would see is you'd want to be paying attention to what Exactly, 0.618. That's your first level, 1444. You can see if you're looking over here on Tiger TV, and if you're just uh, listening to us on the radio or maybe TF on the uh, your mobile device at tfnn.mobi, you can always catch an archive of this show on Channel 9 out there, and you'll certainly be able to uh, you know replay it. You'll be able to learn things. You'll be able to use these same tools on any of the charting uh, software packages that you might use out there. So we knew what our range was. We know that that 1444, which was a 618 retracement, is an area to look for. We also know that there was an A to B equal CD down that was forming that would take it to 1440. And then that final destination was right in that .786 area, 1437, maybe 1435, which was the 1 to 1.272. So we knew what the range was. The market had already done 75% of the work. Now it was up to us to do the other 25% of the work. And all that meant, folks, was paying attention to the signs that are out there. That's the way that it works in life. It's the way that it works in these markets on a continuous basis. And it gave us that sign. It gave us that sign at 1030 when we had the uh, bullish engulfing uh, candle that occurred. And then that following session gave us our uh, confirmation and it was on the way up. Now, folks, if you haven't had a chance 
to go over to the homepage of TFNN.com. I'm going to go ahead and pull this up here to uh, take advantage of the uh, free report that I did for you. Go out there. Under breaking news, you're going to see on the second line item, you're going to see candlesticks, speed of trust by uh, Steve Rhodes. Obviously, that's myself. And absolutely, there is, if you are a, if you are just new to trading and you're wondering where it is that you need to uh, start, that's the place to start. Go take a look at that report because, you know, when we take a look at markets, you know, each of us, when we take a look at things, there are always two ways to see something. The markets, at the, it's the bulls and the bears. So I'm giving you the bullish outcome here. And I'm going to build a little bit of that case for you. I'm going to share with you things that uh, my newsletter clients uh, get each and every morning. It's about a 60 to 70 page newsletter filled with all kinds of charts. I cover each marketplace. It's, it's the futures. It's the indexes. It's the ETFs. It's what's going on around the world. It's the uh, currency market. It's the entire gamut out there. So it's not really just so much that it's a, a newsletter. It's an education out there that you can get each and every day. But first, just go to Candlesticks, the speed of trust out there. You want to be able to. There's nothing faster, folks, uh, in the world than the speed of trust. And so you want to make sure that you understand these patterns that are working out here because you want them to work to your advantage. Now, where's the the market headed well we know it's headed towards its high so you're at 1459 uh, in the ES mini the 1468 is absolutely going to be attacked today and we'll see if there's going to be any kind of energy in this uh, marketplace. If we go, we started there taking a look at the uh, DAX. Let's go take a look at just all the uh, index futures out here. Let's take a look at the uh, daily, and then we'll take a look at the weekly. So let's go take a look at the uh, daily on the ES Mini. The daily on the ES Mini, folks, had created a 1.272 butterfly pattern. Now, the high there, 1468, that's going to be attacked here this morning. You're at 1460. If that area gets taken out, when a one 1.272 butterfly fails, it goes up to where? It goes up to the next floor on that elevator. What's that next floor level? 1.618. So the 1.618 uh, butterfly pattern would take you into the $1,517 mark. I suspect that that is where the ES Mini wants to uh, travel to. That'd be about 1513 uh, and change on the S&P 500. Now, the uh, today's going to be a, you know today's going to be a big day. If we go back and take a look at just simply Fridays, uh, and I was going to try to do this before the show. I think that we'll find that uh, recently, over the course of the last couple months, Friday is typically an up day. Monday is typically a down day. Well, it's Friday. Things are off to a good start around the uh, world, and uh, we'll see how our markets here are going to end. But let's go take a look at the uh, weekly uh, chart on the ES Mini here. We'll put the weekly chart up. This will give you an idea, just like we looked at the DAX. Uh, if we take a look at the uh, ES Mini, you can see it's already cleared, you know, the swing point that would have been a resistance area. That was at the 1441 level. That was a swing point going all the way back into May of 2008, May 23rd, 2008. So it's above that level. Where will it head to? Well, it's already inside. Oh, no, I'm sorry. It hasn't gotten inside there. Let me pull this back just a little bit. So the next real swing point that's out there is December 14th, 2007. The low on that, folks, is 1468.75. You get a close inside there, what does it say? It says you're going to go up to the next level. That next level takes you up to the high of that swing point, 1527. Boy, you get up to 1527, and there's no reason for it to not climb the mountain. Get all the way back to the October 12th. 2007 highs. That's at a price point of about 1580, folks. 877-927-6648 it is fantastic Friday. Give us a call, folks. We'd love to hear from you. We'll be right back. Kate Stalter's exciting newsletter, Low Priced Leaders, has just launched, and now is a great time to get a two-week free trial. Every Wednesday afternoon, Kate sends out her weekly newsletter to her subscribers where she focuses on small-cap stocks with market caps under $2 billion, as well as low-priced equities with share prices ranging from $5 to $12. Kate tracks a variety of stocks with a combination of strong technical support and solid fundamentals. Many of the stocks featured will be recent IPOs. These new Newer issues are often some of the biggest price gainers in the market and provide an excellent opportunity for substantial gains if timed correctly. You can catch Kate Stalter live on Tiger TV with her small cap roundup every Tuesday and Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern Time and visit TFNN.com.
Ramsey.com right now to get your two-week free trial to her brand new newsletter, Low Priced Leaders, while locking in the low introductory monthly rate of only $37.50 per month, almost a 50% discount. Act now. With the launch of Tiger TV, TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Ken Shreve, Kate Stalter, David White, Larry Pesavento, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. 80% of traders fail because they don't know when to get in or out of a market, and all because no one taught them how to read the signs. You see, the stock market has a universal language called Japanese candlesticks, and each day, the buyers and sellers, the bulls and bears, go to work and build signs. This language has been around for thousands of years, and it's easy to learn. I'm Steve Rhodes, co-host of The Money Masters Show, and I'm a master sign builder. Download my free report, Candlesticks, The Speed of Trust, on the homepage of TFNN.com for one of the best-kept candlestick secrets. I'll also be conducting an online course Friday, October 19th, to teach you the language of the market's sign builders. You'll learn the best entry and exit techniques and strategies that will create extraordinary rewards. The course will be archived so you can review it as many times as you like because trading or investing without learning this language is like running a red light. It's an accident waiting to happen and there's no airbags or seatbelts. All the details are on the homepage of TFNN.com. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's new trading newsletter, Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. And you'll get the Technical Corner segment, which is a short but powerful weekly training session on trading. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you just the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two weeks. Go to TFNN.com and click on the free trial link at the top of the page. That's an $85 value, yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind and get the edge you've been looking for. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, you know, they got the uh, Dow right now up about 65 points, S&P up 7, uh, Russell up about uh, 5. And it, we often hear uh, myself, Tom, uh, the other contributors talk about taking a look at strength and weakness. And so here is another piece of the puzzle with regard to where the uh, Dow is headed. And we're going to take a look at uh, GE. Now, GE is, uh, I believe it's, uh, 26th, uh, it's the 26th weighted stock inside the uh, Dow. It represents like about 1%. So, you know, GE is not going to have a, a terrible impact on the uh, direction of what the Dow is doing. However, what GE is, is a really great indicator from a stock standpoint as to when the market is going to correct. And what you're looking for is you're looking for divergences. So oftentimes it's best to take a look at both strength and weakness. So I'm going to share with you, this is something that I shared with my uh, clients here this morning as to another reason why I don't believe that the market is ready to go down just yet. So let's take a look at GE. So if you're watching this on Tiger TV, what you're looking at is you're looking at a chart here. Now you're taking a look at two line charts, so not using the candlesticks here, just simply line charts. It's just easier to be able to show 
the uh, uh, the correlations that we're going to take a look at. So the top is, uh, is, it's in blue on my screen, not sure what it is on yours, but on the top of the screen, the top quadrant, is uh, General Electric. And on the bottom is the Dow. Now what we're looking for here is we're looking for a divergence. And so what GE is really great, and so I'm going to give you something, this is a little gift here this morning that you're always going to want on your, uh, you know, to be paying attention uh, to, most certainly, is going to be taking a look at GE and comparing it to the Dow, because it is a really great indicator of when the market is going to turn. Why? Because it absolutely leads the market on the way down. Now, because it doesn't have uh, much of a weighting, you know, 1% inside the Dow, it can't really turn the Dow, and this just means it's a leading advanced indicator out there. So if we take a look at GE, you're looking for divergences. In this case here, in GE, it started turning down going back to May 2011. So May 2011, back, uh, and, and actually, you know, if we're taking this is a daily chart, so right around, you know, June 1st, May 31st, 2011, all the way into the July 21st level, you can see that the price action in GE was angled down. Whereas if we take a look at that same price action in the Dow, you can see it was moving slightly higher. So there was your divergence, right? And what did uh, GE do? GE gave us the signal that the Dow was going to move down. If we take a look at another time period where GE was moving down, we'll go back to October in 2011, say October 28, 2011, through the time period of about November 15, 2011. You can see that GE was moving down and the Dow itself really going in a sideways range, much like the markets have been here for the last four or five days. What was GE doing? GE was a leading indicator that the Dow was making an important top out there, that there was going to be a reversal. Let's take a look at the next time period. In the case of General Electric, you're going back to the uh, March 19th time frame, or approximately March 19th, 2012, and you can take a look at the price action all the way into the highs of May, May Day, May 1st uh, to May 2nd, actually, 2012 out there. If you take a look at the angle of price in GE, you can see it was moving down. Take a look at uh, price as it was consolidating from that same time period, going back to the middle of March in 2012 up into May 2nd. You had the Dow doing what? Moving sideways. Do you see these divergences here? So GE has been a great bellwether for being able to identify when the market is going to reverse, at least when the Dow is going to reverse, when the top line is going to reverse. Let's take a look at our next situation out here. That's in GE coming back and taking a look at the early August time frame. So if you take a look at uh, August 7th through the time frame of uh, maybe about uh, you know the middle of August, just a short period of time, you can see what was GE doing. GE was angling down, you know, sideways to down, what was the Dow doing? The Dow was uh, moving up out there, right? You had some divergence again. Now, let's just step back and take a look at where are we today? Where is the market today? Take a look at GE. See, this thing is on a big upthrust. Do you see any divergence there whatsoever? You've got GE moving up. You've got the markets moving up. Not until, if you take a look at this chart here, not until GE will actually give us the indication. So here's a cool thing. If you're not familiar with using indicators out there, whether it's uh, retracements, whether it's A to B equals CD patterns, and let's say you've got things in large cap stocks out here, what I've just given you is an absolute another sign out there. I'm telling you the bulls and bears, they constantly go to work each day. They punch in. They build signs out there. What you want to do is you want to become a master of those signs. You want to become a master of your mind, you know, I can teach you to do this here, I can teach you to do this on a continuous basis, go to the home page, download that special report out there, check out my newsletter service, folks, if you haven't had a chance to do that, do that for 30 days, it comes with an unconditional money back guarantee, that's if knowledge is power from your standpoint, if you want to educate yourself, GE on the way up, the Dow on the way up. There's no way this market here is going to correct just yet. 877-927-6648. We get back, folks. We'll take a look at these markets, see how they're going to pop. Has the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. 
Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. You've heard Tom O'Brien on the air, and you've seen him on Tiger TV, as well as being featured as a regular CNBC guest and contributor. And now you can have access to his expert trading advice each morning through his daily trading newsletter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, gives traders, investors, and money managers a thorough strategy for trading stocks, options, and indices every market day. Market Insights comes out each market day before 9.30 a.m. and provides provides traders with Tom's daily commentary, opinion, and specific trade recommendations on the markets. Using advanced Fibonacci methods, volume indicators, Gartley patterns, candlestick charting, gaps, and market timing, Market Insights will give you specific trade recommendations including entry, stop, and exit prices. The summer is over and traders are back. Get your two-week free trial to Market Insights today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. If you're an investor looking for a great weekly investment newsletter, then now is the perfect time to try out Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks. Every Tuesday, Ken breaks down multiple sectors in his weekly newsletter, Ultimate Growth Stocks, with a full in-depth report including specific trading recommendations within his model portfolio, charts, sector analysis, upcoming economic data, along with intraweek trading updates on newsletter positions whenever the market dictates. Right now, you can receive a full month, that's 30 days, to evaluate Ken's newsletter free of charge to see if it fits your trading plan. At less than $75 per month, Ken provides you with his expert trading advice that can pay for itself in no time. Take advantage of this great offer by signing up for a 30-day free trial to Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks today. Don't let this offer pass you by. Visit the front page of TFNN.com and sign up now. If you're a trader thirsty for knowledge, then we have the perfect event for you. Tom O'Brien will be hosting a live four-hour dynamic trading strategies workshop on September 29th in the Tampa area. This one-of-a-kind workshop takes place from 8 a.m. till noon and is completely free. We'll even be giving away almost $2,000 in door prizes randomly drawn from those that attend live. Along with diagnostic trading expert Daryl Martin, Tom O'Brien will teach you how to identify and set up your trades using dynamic trading strategies, and Daryl Martin will teach you his diagnostic trading formula, including the strategy, system, and style that gives you an edge in this market. For more information and to reserve your spot today for the September 29th free Dynamic Trading Strategies Workshop in Tampa, please visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't wait to act as space is limited. Sign up today. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And we're off to the races. You got the Dow up 47 points. S&P's up 7. Composite up 19. Small caps lead the charge on the way up. Up 9 tenths of a percent. Up almost 8 points right now. Apple up at 703. Trading up 4 bucks and change. Microsoft down a penny. Google up 5 bucks and change. Cisco flat. Intel up 7 pennies. Leading the charge on the way up. Dollar wise, you've got Priceline.com up 8 bucks and change. It's a little over a percent. You got Google up 5 bucks and change. About 3 quarters of a percent. Apple right behind them 
up four bucks. Michael Kors making a uh, move this morning. KORS is a ticker symbol up seven percent uh, after uh, guiding higher. You've got Mastercard up three bucks and change. That's up seven tenths of a percent. Uh, Equinix E Q I X up uh, about uh, two bucks and change. Don't get in front of that. The uh, Red Lobster Group, Red Lobster and Olive Garden, Darden Restaurants D R I is a ticker symbol. They're up five percent here this morning. Did they release uh, some numbers or is there some news out there? I just lost that on my screen here. Uh, let's see. Darden Restaurants, earnings top uh, estimates. Uh, so uh, let's see here. They're back. Let's see. What were their earnings here? They had sales of $2 billion versus $1.94. Net earnings of $110 million versus $106 million uh, the year before. You've got, uh, oh, it was Quest Core Pharmaceuticals. Don't get in front of that. That's up 6% this morning. Fossil up a couple bucks. Let's see what's leading things on the way down here. Uh, you've got uh, taking a look at uh, Vivus, VVUS, down 11% this morning. That's two bucks and change. Cooper Tires, CTB, the ticker symbol down 5%. That's off a buck. Uh, everything else is below a buck. Things like uh, Bib, Biogen Te- uh, Industries, uh, Coach, uh, Regenerin. Uh, and uh, so mostly things uh, downwise, uh, not too much down more than a, a buck. <clears throat> now, let me share with you here a, another little uh, pearl. This one's a big pearl uh, for, those that you want, for those of you that want to do the work. So each Friday afternoon, I think it's like around 2.30 or so, the uh, U.S. Uh, Commodities Futures uh, Trading Commission, the CFTC, they provide a breakdown of each Tuesday uh, of the open interest through Tuesday. So in other words, this Friday today in the afternoon, they're going to release a report, release all the data that is all the open interest through last Tuesday. Now, the data is referred to as the commitment of traders. So the CFTC, they classify all futures trading, and it's a huge spreadsheet, folks. If you want to download it, it's there, you know, it's there for you to, it's there for your taking. But then you got to figure out what to do with it and how to take a look at for divergences and, you know, look for different signs that are out there. Because I tell you, the bulls and bears come to work each day and they absolutely build the signs. So, if we take a look at uh, the CFTC data, they, they break it down into basically what's called commercials. Those are the big firms or the market makers out there. Then they've got what are called the non-commercials, which we'll just simply call the large speculators. And then they've got what's referred to as the non-reportables. That's folks like you and me, small speculators. So the commercial traders, the big guys, the big banks, they're presumed to truly be the smart money. And so for folks like myself, we want to watch what is the smart money doing. Because if you want to follow the money, the CFTC, when it comes to uh, data, provide all of that there for you. And it's relatively current. You figure you're getting data right now today, Friday afternoon, based on the positions that were held coming into uh, Tuesday afternoon. So it's pretty good, pretty good current data out there. Now, on my chart here that you're taking a look at, if you're watching this on Tiger TV, the black line there, represents the uh, represents the uh, commercials, okay, so we're talking about the large banks out there, their net positions in the euro, all right? So that is the euro. So in this case here, if the line moves up, it means the commercials are taking a more long position in the euro versus the week before, and just the opposite is true if you see it moving down. Now, here's actually the beauty of this chart, and this is what you really got to be paying attention to, folks. You see, I've taken the uh, Commitment of Traders report, and what I've done is I've moved it fast forward 52 weeks. So that black line that you're actually looking at on my chart, and we're looking at the S&P 500. So on the S&P 500 chart that I've got here, I've got a few hammer candles out there. Uh, You know, hammer candles are very important. It's why I went ahead and put together that special report that's available on uh, uh, the front page of TFNN. I show you a couple of bullish engulfings. I've got the QE1, 2, 3, really what I consider to be some of the important uh, dates. But that black line is really what is important out there, folks, because that is the commitment of traders with regard to the euro. Now, what I've done is I've forwarded this. The black line here is forward 52 weeks. So what 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 we're, what this is really telling us is this is what I want you to this one I want you to try to wrap your head around because you see the com, the commercial traders of futures euros you know typically the big banks they're using these future contracts to manage their assets and their fund flows and what happens with large positions think about it like this folks is it takes them a while to build up they're often early to the party you know late to the party this morning was the FTSE FTSE had turned green so they finally got their invitation the large 
large traders are early to the party. They take their positions early. But if you're looking to follow the money, following currency, and certainly when we take a look at following currency, we're taking a look at the queen, right? The queen represents the bulk of the U.S. dollar index of the king. And so liquidity goes like this. At least this is my assumption here. This is my hypothesis. First, liquidity shows up where? Shows up in the banking system. And then liquidity moves through where? It moves through the stock market. And I think it moves through the stock market a year later. So what we're seeing here, this black line, has nothing to do with Uncle Ben's wild rice that was cooked last week on September 13th. So even before that, and I'm taking a look here, if you're watching my cursor, you're seeing this uh, blue ticked line here. This blue ticked line and you can see that other than a period of time, maybe a couple uh, periods of just a couple of months where this didn't correlate so well, it pretty much correlates. Now, you've got to realize that the black line that you're looking at is not a price thing because it's on a whole different scale. It's just a percentage of net positions of the euro. But last week, way before Uncle Ben came out with uh, QE3, what this chart was saying was last week we were going to see a low, and a low at least going into the end of the month here, uh, both in the uh, euro and uh, or at least with regard to the way that the euros, the way that uh, liquidity was showing up in the stock market. So just think about this as that black line is nothing more than liquidity a year ago now getting into the marketplace. That's why when I take a look at this chart, folks, what this says to me is this market wants to push higher coming into the uh, Christmas time area, coming into the end of the year. Now, it looks like we're going to see a little bit of a, a dip here, but we're not going to see a dip this week. We're probably not going to see a dip uh, next week. It probably comes when we come into the uh, full moon uh, cycle and maybe some other things out there. So this is another little pearl. If you'd like to have this, go check out the newsletter. I'll give you all. In fact, uh, I do a uh, workshop every other Wednesday, one hour a live workshop uh, with my clients, and I think this week what I'll do is just simply do the uh, workshop totally on the commitment of traders, uh, show exactly how to get the data, how to build the chart, which uh, columns to uh, take a look at. So if you've got an interest in that, probably makes sense for you to go sign up for the newsletter because you've got access to that archive. Uh, make sure, you know, yeah, you have access to that archive for a period of uh, 30 days out there. Now, when you also take a look at this chart out here, what you want to do is you want to make sure that take a look at this uh, coming off of the highs from May 6, 2011, all the way up to the swing point high out here at April 13th. Take a look at that uh, ascending trend line. You can see how the market has pushed up through that. And what really happened this week here is you had the S&P get down and test that area. That has become a resistance line, at least in my book. And if you take a look at where the S&P is traveling to next, it's going to be that 1530 range. It's going to be that A to B equals CD that's coming off of the uh, December 2nd lows out there. The S&P, when it was down at 1158.67, that's your uh, A point, your B point out here. If we move this back, is the April 6th time frame, 14.22.38, pulls back into uh, the July 15th area out at 13.06. A to B equals CD is going to take you right up to the uh, 15.30. If it gets up that high, folks, what it will do is it will go top the uh, – they will go – It'll go test the top of that rising price channel that it's been in ever since back in the uh, March. This is this chart here, folks, goes all the way back to March of 2009 out there. Let's go take a look at the uh, U.S. dollar index. We pull up the U.S. dollar index here, folks. I'm going to be pulling up the uh, monthly chart first. So we take a look at the uh, monthly chart. Uh, again, we're taking a look at this long-term descending price channel that the U.S. dollar index had been in. We're going all the way back to the high that was put in in the January. January of 2002 when it was up at the 120 and change level. Uh, U.S. dollar index right now trading out at 79.29, certainly off of its lows. But what I want to show you here as I as I pull this back, uh, and you know, they, as, I, as I mentioned to you, the bulls and bears are always going to work, and they're always building signs. So if you take a look at, and they're, res, they're resistance uh, signs, and they are support signs out here. And so if we take a look at the resistance lines where the market is suggesting that the market's going to turn down. And what you want to be paying attention to, folks, is, you know, monthly charts have got more of an impact than a, than a weekly, weekly than daily, daily than 30-minute, and so on. So we take a look at these uh, monthly charts here of the U.S. dollar index. Gave us those reversal signs here coming into the uh, March 09 time frame, right? March 09, you make a bearish engulfing. You happen to make a uh, three-river uh, evening star pattern uh, during November 2008. So it gave you a real strong area of resistance out here. That area has not been uh, penetrated. 
Uh, the last time that it was uh, tested was in June of 2010 when it formed another three river evening star candle. Couldn't get up over it and the market moved lower. If you take a look at these little shaded boxes here, these shaded boxes just simply represent the uh, retracement levels. And you can see here that the retracement levels, the last time that we've seen some of these bearish engulfing, some of these reversal patterns, these three river evening star patterns, you can see that the price movement was basically the same. What I'm talking about is coming off of the March 09 levels all the way down to the uh, retracement level that came in in November of 2009, November 30th, 2009, the month of that. And if you take a look at the next time that we saw any on a monthly chart, and not only did you have the uh, uh, price channel, uh, what we also had was you could see you had basically the same level of retracement that took place. This was coming back off of the highs from June of 2010 all the way down to the lows that were put in in April 2011. Now what do we have? Well, we had last month, uh, the month of August, you had a bearish engulfing candle. This month you're having follow-through. What the U.S. dollar index is going to at least do is get down and test the uh, uh, because it broke out. It broke out of this long-term descending uh, price channel here. It's at least going to get down and test this. If the U.S. dollar index, and let me try to just shorten this chart up here, if the U.S. dollar index closes back inside that range, and I'm not saying it's going to do it just yet. We won't know until we see how the uh, test takes place. But if it does, folks, what is likely to occur is we're likely to see the same price decline in the U.S., dollar index as we did the last two times and what that will do is that will set up a butterfly pattern that will take the US dollar index into the $66 area 65.83 is the actual price projection we won't know until that line gets tested that is on the monthly chart it's a reason why you want to pay attention to weekly monthly uh, daily charts. If we take a look at the uh, weekly chart out here, you can see that what the U.S. dollar index has done is it's busted through that rising price channel. So it's easy to connect the dots out here. And uh, right now, if we take a look at the week, uh, no real big uh, shakes with regard to a uh, candle formation out there with the U.S. dollar index trading at 79.29. Let's go take a look at uh, light sweet crude. Let's see what uh, crude is doing here, trading out at $93.49. Uh, you know, having uh, now one of the things here is uh, crude is no long is is really not in any overbought territory. So you can expect or we should expect crude to really bounce from here. Now, if we take a look at what crude actually did, we take a look at crude, you can see it formed one of those bearish engulfing candles. It did it on uh, September 17th. You had follow through the next day. Then what we're doing is just simply taking a look at retracement levels. And when you take a look at retracement levels, you're going down from the uh, low of June 28th, out at 77.28, all the way up to the high on uh, 9 14, September 14th. So we take a look at those retracement levels. What you'll see that Light Sweet Crude did is it got down to where? It got down to the point three eight two level. That's 91.58. Actually got down to a low uh, two trading sessions ago of 91 and a quarter. Uh, got down yesterday to a low of 90.96. You can see how that area is held. Also, if we come off of our next set of major swing points out there, what you would use is you would use the uh, candle. Uh, you would use the low of August 2nd. That's at 86.92, all the way up to the same high. What you can see is you had the .618 retracement. So it makes sense, that, and that's why you want to be able to use these Fibonacci retracements and expansion numbers. It's why you want to make sure you've got 382, 618, and 786 on your ruler out there. You can see that what Light Sweet Crude did was 9208 was the number of the .618 area. So you've got Light Sweet Crude here that came into an area of support and uh, right now not really bouncing much. Almost looks to me like Light Sweet Crude is going to go ahead and make another leg down after it does a retracement. Now, if we take a look at, a re at the different retracements out here, let's go ahead and remove some of these lines. I'll make it a little bit easier for you to watch on Tiger TV. Now let's go take a look as we take a look at the uh, bounce out here. Uh, let's look at the highs from uh, September 14th down to the low that was put in yesterday. And what you can see at a minimum, we should see light sweet crude getting up to 94.57. But look at where that sweet 618 is, 96.81. That'll take you all the way back to the top of the trend line, that trend line going back to the March 1st, 2012 time frame. I suspect that we will see light sweet crude bounce up to 96.81 before it decides to make its next move 
put down on an A to B equals CD down. Let's go take a look at some of these stocks here that are moving. you got Apple trading out at 7.03.20 uh, right now. Apple having taken out the uh, 1.272 uh, level, the 1.272 I'm talking about, folks, is a butterfly pattern. That sets up Apple wants to move to that 1.618 level. I believe that number is right around 714. Let's take a look here real quick. 71528 877-927-6648. We'll be right back, folks. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Recently, Basil Chapman has had some outstanding trades in his newsletter, The Opening Call. Each morning by 9 a.m., Basil uploads his newsletter to the TFNN servers so that his subscribers can access his expert trading advice. Basil gives his take on the direction of key indices and updates any active trades that his subscribers are currently in. Just recently, Basil's subscribers closed out a short position in Chipotle Mexican Grill, CMG, for more than an $86 profit per share, over a 20% gain in just one position. If you'd like to check out Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, then visit the front page of TFNN.com and click Trading Newsletters. There you'll find Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, where you can request a free sample copy. Also, don't miss Basil's program, The Tiger Technician's Hour, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern on TFNN. In just December of last year, the price of gold was down over 10%. In today's highly volatile gold market, you need someone in your corner that understands the complex relationships that exist within the price of gold, as well as within a variety of gold equities. Whether it's the South African gold miners and knowing how the RAND dollar relationship will affect their bottom line, or understanding how John Paulson's $5 billion trade in the GLD can move the market, Tom O'Brien gives you the direction you need to become a better trader each week in his newsletter, The Gold Report. With over 20 individual equities covered and almost another 20 on the potential watch list each week, in addition to covering the XAU, HUI, GLD, and Dollar, The Gold Report is a great source for any trader that is looking to be diversified in today's volatile gold market. For your 30-day free trial to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report, log on to TFNN.com today. Don't miss out on this great offer. Act now. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. we got the Dow up 32 points. S&P is up 5. And stay tuned uh, after this show is the Nadex Bull Bear 
binary option hour from 11 to 12. It's Basil Chapman today on Fridays. You know, it is all about your health and your wealth out there. Our health is covered by uh, Nico DeHaan from 12 to 1. Then we go back to Daryl Martin, who will be joining Tom and I from 10 to 11. Uh, Daryl does a, a great show from 1 to 2. And, uh, folks, if you're in the Florida area, uh, Saturday, next Saturday, from 8 to about uh, noontime is going to be a great uh, workshop, a great training session. It's absolutely free. Go to the homepage of TFNN.com. It's going to be uh, held at the uh, uh, Hyatt, uh, uh, Grand Hyatt, I believe it is, in uh, Tampa. Uh, all the details, though, are on the homepage of TFNN.com. Uh, please go check those out from 2 to 3 today. It's the David White Show, 3 to 4. The warm-up band for the Tom O'Brien Show is Ken Shreve and Tom from 4 to 6. If we take a look here at uh, gold, uh, gold is on the daily chart is really uh, starting to approach a uh, over, you know, really overbought area. Uh, it's not at an extreme, but it's getting pretty close. And so gold is due for a uh, correction on the daily charts for sure. And, uh, you know, what you want to be looking for is you want to be looking – to be a buyer of that correction. I don't suggest uh, trying to jump in front of this and play uh, gold or silver uh, necessarily to the uh, downside, but I think that trying to buy the uh, next dip, that would be a important thing to do because gold has moved into long-term bullish mode. You'd like to see the uh, overbought uh, condition get worked out. Uh, if I take a look at the uh, weekly chart out here, and as far as where price might drop back to, you know, I would simply take a look at some retracement levels. Uh, you know, you'd want to be watching the uh, volume. You might have to uh, step into uh, a position here by uh, uh, by scaling in uh, at a couple of different levels out here. We take a look at gold right now just simply off of the low from June 29th up to the high that it's made this morning, pulling back to uh, 1698 or 1642. That would be beautiful. They just pulled back all the way to the 0.618 level, uh, what that would be doing is that would be uh, testing this little downtrend line that it broke out of, and it broke out of with conviction. But I suspect you're looking at about the 1640-ish to 1690 level. Again, if we go switch over to the uh, weekly chart, the weekly chart shows that the gold here not yet approaching a, uh, you know, it's near the overbought range. It just means that gold could simply uh, travel higher. If it breaks much more above this, 1838 is the next price point on target for gold out there. If we take a look at uh, silver here, uh, you got silver trading out at $35.10 right now on the uh, weekly chart. Same thing. It's just really breaking into uh, a real overbought uh, situation out here on the daily. It's certainly out there. And what you want to be looking for is to be a buyer of silver on a pullback. I don't recommend getting in front of this uh, uh, freight train uh, whatsoever. Still no uh, bearish uh, signs out there. So you got uh, silver up for, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, a fifth straight week up here. That's if it closes somewhere you know, above the uh, 30, 34, 70 area. You're trading at 35, uh, 10 right now. That is on silver. Uh, let's go take a look at some of these uh, equities here that are moving and grooving. You got Priceline here. Priceline uh, trading up this morning, up about one percent, up eight bucks and change. Looks like Priceline wants to close the gap, and Priceline has got so it would be coming back into a breakdown area. We talk about trying to uh, buy stocks that are breaking out. Now let them pull back into a breakout area. Well, stocks that are moving down, you want to get those at a breakdown area. That on price line is going to be in the 672 to 682 level, especially if it gets up in there on less than 2.8 million shares. Uh, yesterday did about 550. 7,000 shares. It hasn't had any real volume on the way up there, but that may be, if you can time this with the market, that may be a great shortable candidate. Folks, thanks for being here. Stay tuned. Tom and I, Daryl Martin, for the Nadex Bull Bear Binary Option Hour. We'll be up next. If you're off to start your day, have a fantastic weekend. I'll look forward to seeing you Monday morning. Be safe out there. And remember, folks, it's all about the mind. Rule your mind, and you will rule, rule your world, folks. Take care.